What's up guys, Tano Brock here with another video. So I am a long time Logic Pro user. I've been using Logic for probably about 10 or 11 years now and I love it. It serves me every day, um, it never really disappoints me. Every time they release an update, in my opinion, it really just improves the software and never gets rid of the old features that I need and love. And what I continue to learn about Logic every day is that it is such a deep and nuanced application. There are so many features in Logic that I don't know and you don't know, and I don't know if any Logic user knows. And I continue to discover new features and new capabilities every single day. So I thought I'd make this video to show you guys my top 10 useful tricks, tips, and features in Logic that I find most people don't know. So if you already know some of these, that's awesome. Hopefully I show at least a couple that you don't know. Um, but I hope this video will help you guys learn some new tricks to improve your Logic Pro workflow. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, welcome back. So, trick number one that I want to show you is a way to save CPU power by disabling both the track and its plugins if you're not using it. So I've opened up a session that I'm working on, and here I got my vocal tracks, and as you can see a bunch of them are muted, because they're kind of ideas that I'm not settled on yet, so I'm not using this track. So the first thing you're going to want to do is right click it, go to track header components, and enable on off. That's gonna bring up this power button. Now, you may have seen this before. If you click this, it just disables the track, so you won't hear it. But it doesn't disable the plugins. Now, if we option click this power button, check this out. Boom. Now, the plugins are disabled, so we're saving CPU power if we don't need that track. So any track that I have muted in a session, if I'm starting to max out my CPU, I'm just gonna go ahead and option click all these muted tracks. And now all the plugins are disabled, so those plugins are not taking up any of my CPU power. So again, super useful way to save CPU power by disabling tracks and plugins if you're not using them. All right, so trick number two is a way to easily locate auxiliary track for your bus sends. So if you have a big session with a lot of tracks and a lot of effects returns, it might be annoying to have to scroll through your whole mixer to locate one reverb track to edit, for instance. So there's a really easy solution to that. So as you can see here, a bunch of my tracks are going to bus 12. So if I forget what that is and I wanna locate it and edit it, I'm just gonna shift click the bus send and Logic is gonna take me right there and flash a little outline on the aux track. So let's try that again. I'm gonna find bus 11 this time. So hover over it, shift, click. Boom, every time Logic swipes over there and highlights it for you. So that's a really easy way to find those bus tracks quickly so you don't have to scroll through your mixer. Trick number three is a way to create a track in your arrange window from an aux track in your mix window. So let's take a look at the mixer. Um, I have these three aux tracks, two reverbs and a delay, but in my arrange window, I don't actually have those tracks showing up. So it can be useful to actually see your effects return tracks in your arrange window. So if we go back to the mixer, all we need to do is select that track and click Control T. Now if I go back to my arrange window, we see that track appearing there. So super easy, but super useful. I usually do that to all my aux tracks and then create a folder of effects tracks. So I'll just go ahead and do that for these two. Control T. Now they should be there. And then I'll select them, Apple Shift D to create a folder stack. And we'll call that effects. Now I have a folder of all my effects in my arrange window. Super simple, but super useful trick. 
So one of my biggest pet peeves is receiving a session with a million different track sizes. So with my sessions that I create, I never do this, but I'll often receive a session from someone to mix and I open it up and I see all these different track sizes and it just really bugs me. It makes me feel really disorganized. And I used to be really frustrated about this and trying to correct that manually, but there's a really easy way to automatically standardize the track size. And all it is, is if you hold shift, hover your mouse over the seam between two tracks till you get this little arrow, click and drag. And now automatically your tracks are all the same size, super neat. You can click this little button up here to make them fill the screen and boom, wow, that makes me feel so much better. For some reason, the different track sizes really just kind of scares me. <laughs> so if you didn't know how to do this, now you do. Super easy way to standardize the track size. Trick number five is all about the inverted cycle tool. When I discovered this, I was in awe. <laughs> so we all know about the regular cycle tool. We have it here, it's this yellow bar, you drag it and you can loop sections. But what most people don't know is that if you command click on the cycle bar, it actually inverts that. Meaning when you play the session, it'll skip that section. So this can be really useful if you're trying to play with an arrangement and you wanna see what the first verse sounds like going directly into the chorus and skipping the pre-chorus. So let's just take a listen here to this session to see how it works. So as you can see, when I played the session, the playhead just skipped over this section where we had the cycle tool inverted. And um, again, super useful tool if you want to test out different arrangements and skip certain sections really easily without having to move anything around. Tip number six is all about low latency mode. Now, you might already know about this mode. It allows you to record at a lower latency, just as the name suggests, by disabling certain plugins and processes to lower the latency. But what you might not know is that you can put it in your control bar for easy access to toggle on and off. So what we're gonna do is right click up here, customize control bar and display, and over here we can check low latency mode. Click OK. Now we have this little button where we can toggle low latency mode on and off really easily. This is really useful for me because I'm always recording and then editing and then recording and then editing. So it's really easy this way to turn low latency mode on and off if you're always going back and forth between recording and editing. Trick number seven is smart quantize. Now we all know about regular quantization and that just corrects your MIDI notes exactly to the grid so everything is perfectly in place. And that's really useful. But I discovered smart quantize recently and I have found it really useful for when you wanna keep the human elements of a MIDI performance. So smart quantize is basically a more advanced algorithm that does exactly that. It keeps kind of the human elements of a MIDI part while still keeping it in time. So I'm gonna record a little keyboard part here with some grace notes, and we're gonna use Smart Quantize to retain those human elements, but still keep it in time. All right, here we go. So, now that we got it recorded, if we go up here to our little region inspector, where it does quantize, we can change that to smart quantize. And then I'm gonna choose eighth note triplets because I did sort of a swing feel. Now we see some things moved in there. Let's open it up and listen to it. So, as you can see and hear, all the grace notes and human elements of the performance are retained, yet it's quantized and perfectly in time. So this can be a really useful tool if you have many tracks that you don't want to quantize to the rigid grid and you want to retain some of those human elements of the performances. Trick number eight is an easy way to standardize both MIDI note length and velocity. So I'm gonna record a really simple four on the floor kick track here to demonstrate this.
All right, cool. So let's open this up. And we can see that we have some different velocities and different lengths. So first let's deal with the lengths. Sometimes you'll want every MIDI note in a particular region to be the exact same length. So let's select all of them. And if we hold Alt, Shift, and then drag, as you can see, they all follow. So I'm going to make them super short like that. Now they're all different velocities, so we can do the same thing for velocity. We're going to hold Alt, Shift, and then move the velocity. Now they're all full velocity, or we can bring them down, etc. So there you go. Super easy way to standardize MIDI note velocity and length by holding Shift and Alt. Trick number nine is capture record. So this is a great way to capture MIDI recordings without actually pressing the record button. Let me show you what I mean. So in order to enable this, you're gonna wanna right click your control bar, click customize control bar and enable capture recording. So now I'm just gonna play through my session and I'm just gonna noodle around with some ideas. All right, now let's say I really liked that and I don't wanna to have to re-record it. I can just click this and boom, it appears as if we recorded it. So as you can see, this could come in really handy if you're messing around a lot and you really liked an idea but didn't remember exactly what you played, you can just press the capture recording button and it'll capture your MIDI performance. And we finally made it, trick number 10. So, often when I'm dealing with MIDI, especially pads and synths, I'll have a long sustained note. And the problem with that is when you put your playhead in the middle of that sustained note and press play, you won't hear it. You have to actually play it from the beginning of the sustained note. So for instance, in this electric piano track that I recorded earlier, if I play it from here, we don't hear the sustained bass notes, we only hear the melody. Now, there's a fix for that. We're gonna go into our project settings, go to the MIDI tab, then go to chase and click notes. So trick number 10 is to enable chase MIDI notes. This way, wherever I play it, it'll chase those notes, get them from the beginning and play them wherever your playhead is. So those are my 10 useful tips and tricks and logic to help you speed up your workflow. So if you don't already know these, now you do. I hope it was useful for you. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Comment any questions you have below. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. I'm gonna be posting lots more producing and mixing tutorials very soon. So stay tuned and see you guys in the next video.